Hello friends, welcome back to my channel if you're new here I'm Megan and today we're talking about all the books I read in August. I, guys, Britain, <laughs> England, yeah, UK, had no summer. We had no summer and just, just, just as I come to terms with like, okay, fall's gonna happen, I'm gonna embrace autumn, I'm gonna embrace the coziness. We, it's hot as, <laughs> it's so hot. So, there's that, if I start sweating, mind your business. <laughs> and I have been quite ill the past couple of days, so if I look swollen, my glands, my throat glands are very swollen and it's quite painful <laughs> to talk. So I've put the camera quite high to hide it. <laughs> So hopefully you won't see. Just forgive me if I don't seem as exuberant, but I'm gonna try to. I like chatting to you, you kind of cheer me up. So we're gonna chat about all the books I read in August. August was a pretty good reading month. I read a lot of books I'd been really excited to read, books that I'd been meaning to get around to for a long time. And of course we're gonna go through my statistics in the first part of the studio, then we'll get into disappointments, surprises and hits. I also, in between that, I missed out the part where I will go through every book and tell you their rating. So shall we just get into it? We've got nothing else, you know, to wait for. It was a pretty good month, let's chat about it. <laughs> I actually generally feel like I'm on holiday. Like, it's so hot. <laughs> Just as I accept autumn is coming and like get in the mood. I'm supposed to be doing my full TBR next week. I can't do it in these circumstances. Are you tough enough for the job? Mm, no. So in August, I read 12 books. That's pretty much my average. I'd say 11 to 13 a month is pretty much where I sit, but I need to up that a little bit in these last couple months of the year uh, because <laughs> I got a lot of videos I wanna, <laughs> I wanna do. So wish me luck on that because yeah, we gotta, we gotta speed things up a little bit. <laughs> I read 4,300 pages total. Nice round number. I don't know if I've ever had like a round number like that before. Um, average pages per day is 139 and average pages per book is 358, which is longer for me. Sometimes that averages out, if I read some novellas or something, that averages out to like 200 and something, 220 sometimes it's been before, but it was all pretty much like longer novels bar maybe one book this month. So that's what it averages out to. My average rating was a 3.66. That has been like my average rating the past couple months pretty much since I've been in this kind of five star drought where I haven't had many five stars since the first couple months of the year that's kind of what my average rating has hovered around and the average time a book spent on my TBR was six months let's get into the pie charts let's see what stats we've got here so in terms of genres I read two contemporary one fantasy two historical two horror one mystery one romance, two sci-fi and one thriller. That might be some of the best split of genres I've had in a while. That's such a good variation of genres. Oh my god. <laughs> I like reading a good variation of genres. So yeah, that makes me happy. In terms of ratings, I had one one star, one 2.5, two threes, four fours, three 4.5s and one five. I don't give out a lot of 4.5s. I was looking at this actually on a live with my patrons the other day and I think I've only given out one other 4.5 this whole year. But for some reason this month, there was quite a few books that were like just almost a five, but not quite there. You've been very, very harsh. Nice to meet you, Kelly. Very harsh. Which is annoying because I want more fives. But I have to be honest, you know, it would be better for me if I gave them fives, but I can't lie, they are 4.5s. In terms of how I read the books, two were audiobooks, six were physical, and four I had the physical and the audiobook. In terms of audience, 11 were adult and one was YA. I really have not been reading a ton of YA this year. I'm sorry. <laughs> I really switched to more adult stuff, which has been a big shift in my reading, but I feel like I'm also like rating stuff lower nowadays, so maybe I should read more YA. I don't know. Maybe, I don't, maybe it's an issue. In terms of series stats, one was a companion novel and 11 were standalone. So I didn't really make any series progress this month, but at least I didn't start any. <laughs> we must be grateful for small mercies. In terms of where the book was from, three were from book of the month, one was gifted, seven were books I bought myself and one was from the publisher. In terms of author status, three were debuts, three were new to me and six were authors I read from before. That is a split I usually like to keep. I like to have half 
authors I haven't read from before be that debut or new to me and half authors that I have read before and I'm reading more of their backlist is usually the split I like to keep. And usually I don't tell you this, but I just wanna show you the stats for years in which the books were published because seven of the books I read this month were from 2023, which I'm really proud of myself. <laughs> Oh. We did it. We did it, Joe. Because I think this year I've only read 16 2023 releases, which bearing in mind I've read 99 books this year, that could be better. That definitely could be better. <laughs> so I'm really happy. I really made an effort to read 2023 releases this month and hopefully will continue to do so in September as well. Okay, let's get into all of the books I read this month and their individual ratings. First, I read The Unsinkable Greta James, which I gave five stars. All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham, which I gave four stars. I can't believe I read that in August. It feels like I read this ages ago. <laughs> it feels like I read this a lifetime ago, but I read that in August. <laughs> the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which I gave a 4.5. Kaike, which I gave three stars. The Stationery Shop, which I gave 4.5 stars. Yellow Face by R.F. Kwong, which I gave four stars. A House with Good Bones by T. Kingfisher, which I gave 4.5 stars. Wayward by Amelia Hart, which I gave 2.5 stars. Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez, which I gave, how many? Four stars. I always said three. That's because I was thinking of what I'm going to talk about next. I gave Yours Truly four stars. In the Lives of Puppets by TJ Kuhn, which I gave three stars. In the vlog, I originally said I was going to give this 3.5, but I have since lowered it to a three. Murder in the Family by Cara Hunter, which I gave four stars. And then there's another book that I read, which I gave one star, but you'll see that in a vlog next week. I asked my patrons, because hopefully these next couple months, I am going to be getting a bit ahead of my reading. So I may read books in months that you then won't have seen yet in vlogs. And I was like, should I say what? book it is or do you want to not be spoiled and wait for the vlog and they said wait for the vlog don't say what it is just say that you read a book that you gave that rating so I read a book that I gave <laughs> one star <laughs> and you'll see that next weekend okie dokie let's get into my disappointment surprise and hits starting with my disappointments <laughs> so the first one that I want to chat about I don't want to chat about it I don't want to discuss it I don't want to do, I don't want to chat about it. I don't think we should. <laughs> and it is In the Loves of Puppets by TJ Clune. Now, Talking about your boring, darling. Next. You know, but now I gave this a three star. A three star is not a bad rating, but considering everything else I've read from TJ Clune was a five star, this was very disappointing. So all you need to know about this is that it's kind of like a Pinocchio retelling. We've got this boy who's human who lives with all of these robots basically um his dad is one his friends are one and then something happens to his dad and they have to go on this kind of like wizard of oz esque style quote and there's a lot about this i feel like is very wizard of ozzy like a lot of the plot points particularly in the latter half are like just wizard of oz <laughs> like rip off basically this just didn't hit for me you know dj queen's other books really spoke to me and i feel like they were really trying to say something and I got the message and it resonated with me. And this just didn't. I wasn't entirely sure what this book was trying to say throughout. I feel like it was a little bit confused as to like what its core message really was. And it just didn't emotionally connect with me and I was really bored. <laughs> so sorry. The latter third was probably my favourite part of it. I found the first two thirds very boring. I didn't feel like the writing was as beautiful as TJ Clune's writing usually is and you know also because these characters are robots they are just they have like I said in the vlog they have a shtick. I'll leave all the vlogs of this month linked down below by the way but yeah the robots have a shtick that they stick to and they never really like evolve from really they are very one-dimensional characters because of the nature of what they are but that just didn't make an enjoyable reading experience for me so yeah a three isn't bad because i still think there's good aspects to this book it just wasn't what i know from tj clune and then my other disappointment was from the same vlog and that was wayward i gave this a 2.5 this one is an intergenerational story of these women throughout history one from the 1600s one from the 1940s one from present day who are all related and it's about their individual stories uh, yeah 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 <laughs> right firstly this is pitched as witches if you're gonna say witches give me witches i don't know i don't know how many times i have to say that don't promise me witches if you're not gonna go for a vibe witches need to be an atmosphere a vibe a feeling a moment and it just didn't give me it yes there's like a little bit of magic but like i also said because this is triple timeline you're joking not another one 
Oh, for God's sake, I can't honestly, I can't stand this. We'll get to that in a second. But that did make it difficult to like establish a vibe because it's like three different vibes. But yeah, listen, we know I don't love dual timeline. This was triple timeline. <laughs> and I just felt like each of the stories had very little nuance to them, had very little detail to them, had very little growth to them because they each are only making up a third of the book. You know, the book is like, 370 pages these are each making up 120 pages of the book and so there wasn't much room for them to go on a journey and the three stories are pretty that you know the ones that we've read from before you know they're they're very done stories and I didn't feel like any of the storylines brought anything new to the table um I could basically predict where each one of them was going to go from the get-go so this really wasn't for me it's been a really popular book in the UK this year and we're just gonna put it down <laughs> Surprises, I would say I only really had one this month and that was The Stationery Shop by Marjan Kamali. I had never heard of this book and I read this for Jenny's booktube twin test which I did at the start of this month and I really did enjoy this. So we're following these two characters in Iran at a time of great political upheaval and they fall in love and then we kind of follow their lives afterwards and I once again bulled, bulled, sobbing, crying, screaming. <laughs> on reading sprints with my patrons when reading this. The last like 50 pages of this book, dear God, <laughs> I was a mess. <laughs> I was a mess. It just wasn't quite a fire for me, but like everyone was like, Megan, you've been crying for like 40 minutes. How are you not giving us a fire? But it just wasn't quite a fire. <laughs> Okay. I loved learning more about the political setting at this time that this is set, but really it's about these characters and it's about love and it's about life and it's bittersweet and it's beautiful and the writing was gorgeous and you know, it is a book that is intending to make you cry. That is the one thing I will say about it. Like sometimes there are these books like Travelling Cat Chronicles, like, I can think of many books that like they they want to put you through it emotionally and sometimes I'm, I'm like, hmm. <laughs> You know, you wrote this as like horribly as you could to make me cry, but I really did enjoy it and I would recommend it because um, yeah, I hadn't heard of it before and I'm glad I've read it this month. So hits, I usually only include five stars if I've had them, but I do want to give a little shout out to the other two 4.5s I had this month. So we had A House of Good Bones by T. King Fisher. This one, we're following a character who goes home to her mother's house, and it is also her grandmother's house that they lived at for a while with her grandmother. Her mother now owns it, and her mother has changed, right? Her mother was very liberal, and now she's putting up a freaking Confederate wedding painting up in the kitchen that was her grandma's. It's about a lot of things, right? It's about how parents can change as they age. I also think it's about family trauma and family, you know, how one generation tries to improve things for the next generation and protect the next generation. But more than anything, I loved the writing in this. This was my first, I feel like, true T. King Fisher. I read a house, um, not a house of good bodies, this one. I read What Moves the Dead earlier this year and really enjoyed it. But I think it's maybe a bit different from her usual writing style. Whereas this one, Oh, I loved the main character. Like, she was so in reality, right? She was so, like, mentally, like, how, you know, sometimes when you read books and, like, a person acts as if no real person would ever act. Like, when something weird happens, they just go on with it rather than being like, what the fuck? Like, as a real person would. She was really funny. She was really funny. And I just made me so excited to read more T. King Fisher because I feel like this writing style is just going to be, like, my favourite thing. I'm obsessed. I said in the vlog how the, I listened to the audiobook in particular for this, the narrator reminded me of the narrator from Nancy Drew, the Nancy Drew games, right? And some people are like, some people who also love the Nancy Drew games are like, oh, I have to go read this. I'm scared you won't feel the same. <laughs> it's just something that clicked in my brain, that the way that the book was written and the way the narrator was narrating things really reminded me of the way Nancy used to talk in those games. I loved the Nancy Drew games growing up. I still, I want to play more. Maybe I should just buy another one and like play it. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> so yeah, really enjoyed this. It's only short, but I think it really packs a punch and I loved the kind of way that the horror in it built. And then my other 4.5 was A Southern Book Club's Guide to Saying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. This is by far my favorite Grady Hendrix. This is set in the 1990s in like America, suburbia. These women have this book club. We're following mainly Patricia and her family. And then this guy moves in 
and like maybe he's a vampire. <laughs> I really, 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 really enjoyed this. This is again a funny book. It's my kind of horror. Yes, there's absolute gore in this. There's moments I was reading this, I was like, Jesus Christ, like that is disgusting. <laughs> there's moments in this that are absolutely horrific, but Grady Hendrix write with, writes with this bit of fun, right? He writes with this bit of like nod, nod, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, you know, like, mm. Mm -hmm, you know, I just loved the writing style. I loved the narrative voice. I loved what this was saying about women. <laughs> women the pressure on women the pressure the on in relationships that still exist today of like being a certain person in the relationship and like the responsibilities that women often undertake it's also vampires and it's a lot of fun it's camp it's ridiculous it's over the top i had so much fun with it i almost gave it a five star i just had a few problems with like the other women in the book club i never really got to know them and the ending i just wasn't sure like played out exactly you know, how it would have done if it was a five star for me, but I cannot recommend this enough. It was so much fun. <laughs> it was such a fun read. I always really, really enjoy his books and I want to recommend them really widely. I feel like some people say they haven't loved this. I don't get that personally, but okay, you do you. But I just feel like everyone could have a good time with this one. And then my actual biggest hit was the first book I read this month and that was The Unsinkable Greta James by Jennifer E. Smith, which I gave five stars. Now, <laughs> If you saw the vlog, I read this in a vlog where it was the finale to Wrapped Up and I couldn't stop reading until I found a five star. So I was having to unwrap books. I couldn't choose what I was reading. And I read this first, so I gave it a five star. Now, contrary to what I just said about the Grady Hendrix book, I wouldn't recommend this to everyone because it is fairly simple, right? Like we're following a character whose mother has just died and she goes on the cruise that her parents had booked in like her mum's place. And it's really about her grief. It's about her dad's grief. And it's about working through that. She's also like a world famous musician who's recently had a breakdown on stage. So there's like those, there's grief and then there's like working out her creative job, right? This just hit me. I cried multiple times in this and I, it just got me. It just got me. What it said about grief, you know, particularly there's a part where she's talking to her dad and what it says about like losing the person you've been with. Like, I can't even, don't even, don't. Like your whole life, <laughs> the person you've loved your whole life, like how do you move on from that? It just got me. I also think it helped. This is a set on a cruise in Alaska. I went on a cruise to Norway last year and I felt like I could, it's similar life, like, you know, kind of, you know, glaciers and stuff. I feel like I could really imagine the setting. The setting was very, very vivid to me. And it just felt like a comfort read, right? I don't want everyone to, I don't think this is the greatest work of literature, right? Contrary to like other five stars I've given, <laughs> I just feel the need to like preface this one because you might read it and be like, but it got me. It got me on the day and I was like, oh, it's five stars. I, it's five stars, I can't lie. It's five. I wanted to read more in that vlog. <laughs> I wanted to read more than one book. So again, it would have actually benefited me if I hadn't given this five stars, contrary to the 4.5s I should have given five stars. But I can't lie, it was a five star and I just loved it. I loved it. It was just such a lovely read. So don't know if I'd recommend it to everyone, <laughs> but I really, really loved it. There we have it. That was my August wrap up. I need to go like stand in the freezer. I'm gonna take everything out of the freezer and just stand in there. <laughs> because I'm so hot. But let me know how your August went in terms of reading. I would love to know, was it a good reading month for you? Did you enjoy what you read? Let me know down below some of your hits or surprises or disappointments of the month. And I will see you very soon in another one. Bye.